Welcome to Go Fish with Dan Kenny. I'm up in Maine on the Penobscot River with Richie Devon from Twin Maple Outdoors. Smalley Mania. Here we are. We're going to do it again, Dan. Crush some fish. Let's do it. Enjoy the show. Well, we're flying up the river, the Parabi, in the G3 jet boat, and uh, we're going after some smallmouth bass today. It's going to be overcast. You know, we uh, rolled in here into town. We're going out about 11 a.m., so we got a nice little window, 11 to dark, and uh, we're going to get on them. It's going to be a good day. Go Fish Sand Show before, you know, I've done a couple of other things with uh, Richie Yvonne and uh, truthfully over the past few years through the uh, fishing industry, you know, my passion for Maine fishing, him being in Maine and, uh, and running his business with Maple Outdoors, we've become pretty good friends and it's just, it's always a treat, it's, a, it's just a great day to spend with good friends and it's almost like, you know, not really work, you know, some of these shows you film, you travel to different people, there's logistics, there's attitudes, there's egos, and there's all this stuff that goes into it, into the Goldfish Dam production behind the scene, and, and uh, you know, I can honestly say when you're always rich, it's just, you know, you and your buddies all fishing, it, it, it just makes it for a nice trip. Living the dream. Rich is going to do some wacky worm in here, and I just put on a soft pla plastic turtle with a bullet weight. Just got on the water. I'm looking forward to catching some smallies on a variety of baits and presentations. It's going to be fun. So what we got here, Dan, is I'm, I'm fishing a uh, four-inch uh, whack. It's a wacky rig uh, with a, a, a four-inch Cinco, and uh, this is like a finesse fishing with some fluorocarbon line. The fluorocarbon uh, inherently sinks, so it's a great uh, line to use with the, uh, the Cinco. On top of being transparent in the water, it's got a little weight to it, so it gets down where the fish are, and it gives a, a real nice natural presentation to the, the smallie. The idea here is to get the, uh, the bait down to the fish that are hiding behind the rocks and the boulders, the current's coming by, the food's coming by, fish are hiding out near the rocks and we're presenting that bait in a natural fashion so they uh, they want to they want to eat it and yeah so, we got into a nice little spot here yeah. to start the morning off yep there we go Dan here's our first one all right take the drag a little bit yeah she's a oh yeah oh yeah using my uh my ultralight today, my grant rod, and my one piece you can really feel the uh, fish when they put it in their mouth. So I get a nice hook set right in the lip, and I don't allow them to swallow it by getting that uh, setting that hook. Is, I know it's a good size because he's staying deep; he's not breaking right. the water. So it's uh, figures. I'm I'm still rigging up, and you're going to catch a fish on me, aren't you? No. That's that's just how you roll, Rich. You know. That's how I roll. I, I'm, I'm trying to that's get a my nice one there. Yeah. My lure in the water, and you're that's just catching fish. that smallie. That's a nice one. Yeah. That's a quality smallmouth bass right there. Yeah. Now, when I'm going, to, when they uh, tend to see to inhale it real quick. So I go right through the back, basically grab the hook, pop the hook right out like so, set them back in the water. There we go, there's another one. Another, another decent sized smallie. They are definitely active today. This is a good overcast day. We're a catch and release fishery here, so if I lose them, I lose them, but 
I usually like to lip them and get personal with the fish one on one. I can get get my mouth in there. He's a uh, he's not tired out yet. That's the thing. But that's good. You want to get him in quick and release him quick. That way, when you get him in quick and you release him quick, it doesn't hurt the fish. They go on their merry way. We're happy. They're happy. It's a good day. With a nice slab. So you Penobscot River Smalley. So I have a slight bend in my line. And that's my strike indicator. And between that and the tick, tick, tick that you feel right through the rod. I'm using a one piece rod today uh, from Grant Rod. It's got a wooden handle. The energy gets transferred right through the rod down to the handle. And there we go. Oh, oh. Which has got a snag. It happens. You know you're fishing in the right spot when you get a snag. The first presentation is always the critical presentation. It's the one you want to have a natural presentation. You don't want to have any, um, you don't want to yank it off the water. You want to just ease it off the water if you're going to cast again. All these things are critical when you, it's finesse fishing. It's just lush country up here. Beautiful. I have a slight little bow right here. That little bow right there is my strike indicator. And I'm maintaining that bow by um, basically lowering and elevating my rod tip. And as the bait goes downstream, I'm lowering my rod tip, keeping that slight bend without any uh, unnatural tension on, or any kind of drag on the line. So said if you yeah, there we go. There's another one. Oh, nice fish. That's a nice one. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good. That's, that's a, nice a good fish. 17, 18, 18 inch fish, probably. I just got, he doesn't know he's caught yet. He's gonna let, he's gonna take my drag out. As soon as he knows, he's, as soon as he figures out, hey, this, this is not natural. <laughs> I saw good. him come up and strike it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Love that about the smallmouth bass. Yeah, they're You very, see him on the water look, look, come look, up for it. Look at this rod. I'll tell you what, it's it's getting a workout. Is it any wonder why customers go home with a sore arm? Right. <laughs> it's awesome. He's not ready to come in. I'm gonna give him. No, he's not ready yeah, to come here in. Here he comes. With that Grant Rod Ultralight 7-Minute <laughs> Retrieve Rod. He's not ready to come in yet. We like it when they fill the net up. Oh, that's a nice fish. Got one. Right there. All right. Nice one, Dan. Yeah, it's not going to weigh up like yours, I don't think. But he's a jumper. Here he comes. Penobscot River Smalley. He's a come fighter up here in northern Maine and we'll have a great time together. Oh yeah. Look at that Dan. Doubled up. Right nice here. Doubles. That's yep. awesome. Perfect. Right at the top of the mouth just like nice we wanted. Fish. Nice fish. Yep. Get that hook right out of there. Beautiful. Nice. Nice dark healthy smallie right here. Nice yep. work. Mm. Top of the morning to you, big boy. You're watching Goldfish Dan, and we'll be right back after this break. Thanks to the increasingly volatile price of fossil fuels like natural gas, fuel oil, and propane, homeowners around the country are switching to a water furnace geothermal heat pump. Water furnace units use the free renewable energy in your backyard to save up to 70% on heating, cooling, and hot water. And right now, save even more with a 30% renewable energy tax credit. To see how much you'd save by switching to geothermal, visit waterfurnace.com switch to try our free savings calculator right now. Hi folks, my name is Rich, I'm from Twin Maple Outdoors and today we're here on the Penobscot. I want to show some of you folks um, how you can easily uh, catch a smallmouth bass on your own. Um, here I have a Gamatsu 2-aught hook, like a drop shot hook, 
and we're going to attach this to what they call a wacky rig and the wacky rig is is uh, no more than a, a four inch we use a four inch worm and we're taking it out of a Senko kit okay they come in different colors different lengths I find the four inch to work the best for what I do and here in the river and you can get this little you can use a sharpie but you can also buy an actual uh, tool here that actually puts the o-ring around the worm so to give you a quick demonstration I like to put it center or near the flat spot on the worm and uh, simply take the o-ring bring it around like that okay line it up to the center and snap it right in place like so. Okay. Take your hook. Okay. And take your hook and go underneath the O-ring. And bring it right to the bend of the shaft. And that's all you have to do. And what happens is this will prolong the, the, your uh, life of your worm. And when you, when you uh, put it in the water, what happens is this worm flutters down very naturally, just like a natural bait. Maybe it came out of a bald eagle or came out of a kingfisher. <clears throat> came down like that. Bass takes it and you hopefully will get a nice hook set on the fish. Look at that, fish on. Fish on! Came and jumped out of nowhere. Skinny water smallie right here. Hey baby! Woo! That's what you do right there. Right there, baby. Small fish. Nice work. Treble only hurts for a minute, so sometimes I just grab them. You gotta risk it, but. That's uh, probably every bit of nine inches long. But a load of fun. This whole, this whole, this is a big gigantic, think of this as a big gigantic a pool, pool, and there's fish everywhere. I'll push, I'll, I can pick fish right off that bank right now if I wanted to. As long as they're actively feeding, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll get them, we'll crush them. Got one. All right, nice one, Dan. There we go, baby. Good job. There we go. Bring it up right side. Here okay. we go. You need another on that one? Nope. I'm just going to bring it okay. in slow. Boat's moving around. He's a fighter. He's a fighter. Nothing, nothing to write home about, but he's a good fighter. Nice yeah, fish. right there. That's yeah. a nice slab. Got a little belly. Yep. It's been feeding. Look at the fat belly on that fish. <laughs> Healthy, fat. That's it. That fish is loving life. Now this type of fishing rich right here, we found this spot and you know the water is obviously pretty stained in here but pretty big boulder here that's about a 14 foot around. Yep. Another boulder there that's probably about 20 feet around. Yep. And then between this boulder and that rock that's coming out of the water there's a series of smaller boulders and uh, what we found is we just kind of, right now we kind of drifted on top of them but we'll get off a little bit, cast around them and those smallies as you know, they, they like to sit behind these rocks. Yeah. This whole area has got that same kind of bottom structure all throughout this, this area right here so that's why I, I tend to like it because it holds the fish, the fish like it as well so. Got one. All right. You're not going to believe the size of this fish. Rich, you're not going to believe it. Huge. <laughs> Feisty, though. Feisty. Love these smallies. Man, he attacked it. It does not matter. Look at this. They're, yeah, they, they're, they're this size, them. and they just hit it. That little guy right there. Tons of fun. Smallie fishing right here. So no matter where your bait is, your rod tip should be pointed at your, at your bait. And the line should not be getting dragged by the current. And you should have a slight bend in there and no unnatural drag on the bait. When it's windy out, I put the boat where I want to fish, but maybe about five to 10 feet away. And then I cast in close. Right. So I have control over my line and my rod and all that. Well, I just changed up to a tube. We'll see what happens here with the tube action. 
I'm not the end all be all on smallmouth fishing, but I do know one thing. They like tubes. Got one. Little guy. Hey, baby. Here oh. we go, baby. Come to daddy. <laughs> Look what I got, Rich. <laughs> oh, nice. That is so cool. There you go. Fish on. There we go. Nice fish in the tube. Just sometimes you got to change up there, Rich, like nice. we talked about, right? There you go. Yep. Oh, that's a nice smallie right yep. there. Yep. You in that? Nope. Oh, right in the boat. Nice fish right there. Look at this smallie, Rich. Look at the size Beautiful. of this thing. Here we go, baby. Look at the size of this smallie on the tube. We were having a little bit of a drought, folks, right there, and I just said, I'm going to pop on this tube. Never be afraid to change things up. Nice smallie right there, though. Healthy, Penobscot River, beautiful. You're watching Go Fish Dan, and we'll be right back after this break. This is my office. It's hot, it's loud, and you don't even want to know what I spend on gas. So when I get home, I want it to be comfortable without spending a fortune on fuel. That's why I chose a water furnace geothermal heat pump. Water furnace units use the free renewable energy stored in your backyard to save up to 70% on heating, cooling, and hot water. It's like taking two cars off the road. Two cars have suddenly vanished, handing Gordon the win here at Talad. What do you mean I can't pick which two? Hey Rich, you know I'm up here in the great state of Maine and yes, Kittery Trade & Post sponsors me and they're a big supporter, but the uniqueness of the store, the fishing, hunting, camping department, I mean, it really can't be beat. I just love coming across that bridge, seeing the Kittery exit, and no, it's a Maine icon, I love the visit. You gotta check it out, Kittery Trade & Post, exit three. Sheer beauty. Oh, I only got two of these white and green ones, uh, Dan, on the boat. But you can have you can have that other color green one that I have somewhere on the boat. Um, I'm gonna take the one that catches the fish here, if you don't mind, and uh, and you can take the other color, Dan. Um, th that's all I have. Sorry. I mean, I mean, don't mind me. Hey, do you want to reel this in? No. Okay. <laughs> but I am going to go around you because you're like Dude, taking you wanna, seven what, minutes to you, bring it. Can you reel this in for me? <laughs> oh, my arm is getting sore. I can't. I, I don't know if I have the stamina anymore. Don't. Are you going to go back this way? I said I put you right in a hole, Dan, and you should have got a fish there, buddy. I just had a hit. I know. I said there's fish in this hole. Didn't I say it? Look at the side. On. Look. He's on. Yep. Doubled up. Yo, did you see that come out of the water? <laughs> oh my goodness! He came out That's of the awesome. water six feet. All right, can we get? Let's, wow! You doubled up, Dan. This is awesome. This thing came out of the water six feet. Right, we'll have to strike a pose with two fish here. Strike a pose. The difference between Rich and Go Fish Dan. Rich, finesse. Brings it in, takes them four and a half hours to get the fish into the boat. Me, I'm ripping them in. Nice. Woohoo! Panabi crushing. Hey, just give, give it a catch, right? <laughs> I just said, don't catch my Rich fish. What does he do? <laughs> he catches my. So I know how you are now, Dan. <laughs> Let me reel this. You might have the rest of the people buffaloed, but I know how you Look are. Look what I caught, though. Look what I caught. Oh. You're not going to believe it. <laughs> Rich dropped his line in the water and we're getting that hook out with the hemos. Look at that. Okay, there go. Okay, ready? There we go. There you go, you want your fish? No, not that big, but strong. That's all right. Yeah. Hey, I gotta jump out of them. Holy murder, they can fight, I'm telling you. He's not that tired, I can tell you that. That's a heavy fish. Yeah, it is. Fatty. 
Holy man, I'm out of breath. Look at that hook set. Isn't that a wonderful hook set? What a fat fish. He tug, I tell you, that, that that's uh, he's eating pretty good there. Fish on. Am I gonna get him to jump? Woo! Nice. Yes, Do you indeed. like that color? He's a fighter. You gonna net this one? Well, Look at how they dig under the bowl like that, pretty huh? big. Oh yeah, it's good size. Nice job. There you go. There we go. Nice fish right there. Look at that. Woo! You missed that? Yep. Got one. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, baby dog. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. He's a fighter. He's a fighter. <laughs> Gotta love these guys right here. Here we go. All righty. All righty then. You're watching Go Fish Dan, home of the big fish, and we'll be right back after this break. Thanks to the increasingly volatile price of fossil fuels like natural gas, fuel oil, and propane, homeowners around the country are switching to a water furnace geothermal heat pump. Water furnace units use the free renewable energy in your backyard to save up to 70% on heating, cooling, and hot water. And right now, save even more with a 30% renewable energy tax credit. To see how much you'd save by switching to geothermal, visit waterfurnace.com switch to try our free savings calculator right now. Well, let's uh, let me go out okay. here. I'm gonna go next to that log over there. Yeah. Try uh, do a worm over there. I think that would be good. Yep. And I'll anchor it over there so you can hit it. Got him. Nice. Nope. Got off again. Ha uh. <laughs> ha. Pull him straight up. You're all straight mine, up. sucker. There you go. You're all mine. You're not going into the logs. Oh no. Oh no. There you go. Just pile. what I wanted, right there. There we go. Off you go. Another Panabi. Smallmouth. Looks like a female. I believe the females don't have any stripes on them, or you know, the uh, as far as up and down. Right, the vertical. And the males have more stripes. That's what I understand is correct. Is that most of them have nine, nine striper roos. Pretty little baby. Nice job. There we go. There we go, baby. Come to Papa. Come to Papa. There, there we, we go. go. Nice smaller right there. Yep. Yep, as I was saying, no treble, no bass. It's all about the bass, about the bass, no treble in your finger. <laughs> hmm. We'll take it. We'll take it. It's fun. Nice fish. Fish. Nice bass for six inches of water, huh? Oh, yeah. Look at the top water. Fig is rich. I got the seven inch one and you got the 13 incher. You're just a stud. What can you say? <laughs> he ingested this hook and I'm seeing which way it goes. And I popped it out with a new cast hemostats. Awesome. They have a cutter tool, uh, eyelet poker, 
They've got a hole here so you can put your hook on, tie it on, and, and tighten up a knot on a hook. And you've got your pliers. Wonderful tool. One leave home and out. Hey Rich, well another summer, another Penobscot River main adventure, right? I mean... You bet, Dan. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. You gotta get up here. We're living the dream. They need to come up and see us, catch some of these bronze backs. Penobscot River up in Maine. Twin Maple Outdoors at your service. Look at this. Look at the sensitivity on this rod here. I mean, to pick up this fish right here, ladies and gentlemen, it's just a sensitive tip all day long. How kind of rod is that? I am the king of the small fish. <laughs> wow. Fish on. Nice, Dan. There we go. Please be a little bigger. Yeah. That'd be nice. Oh, yeah. A little bit bigger right here. This is an upgrade. Definitely, definitely an upgrade that I needed right here. That's what I needed, folks, right there, an upgrade. Yes. Beautiful fish. Yep. Nice job. Good work, Dan. That's nice. Yep. So I need to do my Wayne Lomas. Good friend of mine, Wayne Lomas. This is, this is Wayne Lomas pose, right? So this is Go Fish Dan a lot of times, just putting it out like this, right? Wayne Lomas, <laughs> he's, the, he's the extender. He likes, couple, he likes to add a couple pounds he's to He's the fish. extender. That's, a, that's what we're gonna start calling Add him. the pounds, baby. Okay, this, this spot we're fishing in today, folks, um, this is part of the Penobscot River's crib works which are um, a rock, they're man-made rock piles used from 1907, 1927 to navigate the logs that were harvested from upper northern Maine on the uh, west branch, east, east branches of the Penobscot. The, uh, the logs flowed down the river and they went to Bangor for market. Around 1927, the logs got rerouted to the east Millinocket and Millinocket wood mills. So all the stock went there. So when you see these rock piles, these were man-made and they hold fish. Fish on. On the spinner bait. Here we go. Oh, come on. Boy, these these pickle are liking the spinner bait, huh? <laughs> these pickle. Get over here. Get over here. You get you get over here. You just gotta manhandle these suckers and yell at them. And then back they go. Hey folks, if you haven't fished the Penobscot River in Maine, check it off your bucket list. I mean, it's just arguably top 10 smallmouth fisheries in the country. That's right. Um, but Twin Maple Outdoors is up here. He knows the waters. Put you on the smallies. Uh, we, we've had some really good times up here fishing for them, and, and uh, even in the tributaries, all the Penobscot tributaries, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just all fantastic Maine smallmouth fishing. Yep. We access it with a jet boat. Um, we've got the trolling motor that's got the GPS control on it. So we have really controlled fishing. We don't miss too much water when we go, and uh, it's very productive. Hey Rich, what can I say? Penobscot River, smallmouth bassin, and I mean, you get to do it a lot more than me, but it's a blast. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, Dan. We, I do it every day, but when I, you come over, I really look forward to it. We have a great time, we crush fish, and I'm looking forward to doing it again with you. We sure will. Until next time, God bless and go fish. <laughs>